Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to crop an image to a circle in Photoshop. We're going to do it so that the circle is transparent first of all, and then we're going to see how to add a frame and a background to it. To crop an image to a circle, first of all, you'll want to open the image inside Photoshop and then make the Layers panel visible. You'll do that by choosing Window and then Layers. You'll see here that you have a background layer and what we want to do is to convert that to a regular layer and you can do that by just double clicking that layer and click OK. You can see now that it is a regular layer. The tool that we'll use to do the cropping is this elliptical marquee tool and it shares a toolbar position with the rectangular marquee tool. I'm just going to select the elliptical marquee tool and to draw out a circle over this girl's face, I'm going to hold the Shift key and keep it held down because the Shift key constrains the ellipse to a circle. Now chances are when you draw yours like I have here is it's not going to go in the right place, but that's easy to solve. I'm keeping my finger on the Shift key and I haven't moved my finger from the left mouse button. That's critical that I'm still drawing this circle. I'm going to hold down now the space bar. When I do that, it allows me to move the circle as I'm drawing it. So hold down the space bar, move the circle, and when you're done, let go the space bar. Of course, you'll still want to keep held down the Shift key and the left mouse button because you want to make sure that your circle is drawn correctly. Only when you've got it positioned exactly where you want it to be and it's the right shape and size, let go the left mouse button and then you can let go the shift key. I have my circle perfectly positioned over my little girl's face. If you don't get it right the first time, you can just go and redraw it. So I'm just going to click again on the elliptical marquee tool and let's try redrawing it. I can do that as many times as I need to until I get it perfectly right. But with the combination of the space bar and the shift key and a little bit of practice, you should be able to get it right the first time. So here is my selection. Now the little girl's face is selected, so if I were to press delete right now, I'll lose her face. What I want to do is I want to delete everything except her face. So I'm going to do what is called inverting this selection. Make selected everything that is not currently selected. I do that by selecting Select and then Inverse. Now I can press the Delete key and now I have a circle which is the little girl's face. Now there are a few things to know about cropping images to a circle and one of them is that images are never saved as circles. They have to be saved as either squares or rectangles. So wherever we were to put this image right now, it's carrying a lot of extra image with it. So we'll want to crop it to shape. So I'm going to go and get the crop tool. I'm just going to crop in very, very close, but not over the edges of this circle shape. That will mean that if I put this image, for example, on the web, it's not going to have a lot of space between it and the next image or the text, for example. I'll click the check mark. This checkerboard sort of pattern behind the little girl's face is telling me that this area is going to be transparent. So if I save this image correctly and put it up on the web, if I put it on, say, a yellow or brown background, then I'm not going to see any image in this area. It's going to look like a perfect circle. Of course, that begs the question is, how do I save this image? So that's going to be the case. Well, I'll choose File and then Save As. And when I'm saving it, I'm just going to find the location I want to put it in. Here it is. I'm going to call it Girl Framed. And I want to save it as a ping file, a PNG file. Here it is here, ping. I'll click on that. And then I'm going to click Save. And I'm going to select OK so that I select the default options. And that is an image that has transparency built into it. This area is going to be transparent. Now, what if you wanted to do something a little different? You want to crop the little girl to a circle, but you, for example, want to put a pink frame around her. Well, we can do that again using the Layers palette. What we're going to do is click here on this icon. It's the Create a New Layer icon. So I'll click once on that. And I'm going to drag it underneath her 
So I have her layer on top and this transparent empty layer on the bottom. And now I can fill this layer with any color. I can go and select a color using the color picker here, but I can also go and select a color from the image. To do that, I would click here on the eyedropper tool. And for example, I can go and select a pink, the same pink as is in her shirt here. The pink is the foreground color. So I'm going to go here now to where the gradient tool is. But what I want really is this paint bucket tool. So I'm just going to click on the paint bucket tool. Make sure I have my empty layer selected. I'm just going to click once to fill this layer with a pink color. Now you can also do things such as adding a circular frame around the image. Let's go to the layer that has the little girl on it and let's click the FX button here, the Add Layer Style button, and I'm going to click Stroke. And now I can add a stroke around the edge of the image. You can see that the default here right now is a sort of light or bright white stroke. It's very small, it's only 10 pixels. This is really quite a large image. And it's on the outside of the circle, but we could move it to the inside if we wanted to make it perhaps even a little bit smaller. Now we can also add a drop shadow. So I could click here on the drop shadow and then click on the drop shadow so I can actually adjust it. Now this drop shadow can be dragged, so I can actually just drag it into position. And if I don't want it to be quite so dark, then I'm just going to decrease this opacity slider and that makes it a little less dark. And I'll click OK. Now you could save this image as a ping image or a JPEG image. It doesn't matter because you're going to be using the entire area of the image, including this area that previously was transparent. For the web, you'll want to be using JPEG or PING as your image file format because those are the two file formats that can be displayed on the web. Let's go and save this one as a JPEG. File, Save As. I'm going to select the folder it's going in. I'll type Girl Pink Frame as the file name. And now I'm going to go and look for JPEG. Here it is, JPEG. It's a JPG, JPEG, or JPE file. They're the ones that we need to select here. And I'll just click Save. And then when the JPEG Options dialog comes up, I can select how big an image I want. So I'm just going to make it, for example, high quality for the web. And I'll click OK. So there's how to crop an image to a circle in Photoshop, how to save it for the web so that it has transparency around it, and also how to add a small frame and a background to it if that's what you prefer to do. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.